Hey, Vern, guess what? I was just up in my attic, and you won't believe what I found. Look at all this junk. My first toy. I had some fun with these suckers. Roger, Wilco, I'm hit bad. Can you bring me in? Yes, we can bring you in, Roger Wilco, on number 12. I see him, sir. I see him. He's approaching 12 right now. We got him on radar, sir. I can hear him. He's coming in clean. He's still got an engine. I just want to tell you, men, you've done a great service to Britain. We can't have Jenny hopping around among the hedgerows. No, we won't have it. Not if it takes every drop of British blood. I'd like to see this. And here it is. The Ernest P. Worrell family album. <laughs> Do I look like I have stupid written all over my face? Burn my, 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 uh, burn my one hand. Burn. Stop working on that old antenna. I want you to see my family album. There's whorls from all over in here, buddy. The whorls practically did it all. Well, here's... Here's Dingus Worrell. He came over during the Great Potato Famine. He later went on to become a yam magnet. And then... Here's Corporal Davy Worrell. He was a real pioneer Indian fighter. He once saved a fort from Indian attack single-handedly. Or with one hand or all by himself. I don't know. Anyway, he was a sly old fox. He was caught outside the fort, and the Indians started chasing him across the countryside. He was running for his life. Approaching fort, sir. Come on, you guys, let me in. It's me, Davy. Hello. Ah, oh, come on out. Women folk from the settlement. Whiskey. Got a couple of two week furloughs to Tahiti. Uh -oh. Golly, Bob Howdy, look at all them Native Americans. Pale face, open gate. Steady, man. Hold your fire. Pony soldiers leave them this morning. Uh, reinforcements arrive this afternoon. Easy, man. Don't anybody get trigger happy. Identify yourself. I am Chief Running Vern, proud chief of entire Beigefoot Nation. Beigefoot? Well, more like off-white. More like I'm tan. Like color of wheat. Open gate, pale face. Get free gift. We don't want no free gift. Do we, men? Nang! None for me, sir. Well, I don't know. I, 
I could use a new toaster. Don't be crazy, old man. It's a trick. Well, I never fought the base, but before. Why don't you go lay down? Well, all right. Does that answer your question, red man? Mm, kinda. Okay, Captain, have your men sound off. Yes, sir, Major. All right, men. You heard the Major? Yeah, sound off. Here we go. Darn one of you. Ein! Two! Was he... Was he two or three? He was three, Bozo. Try it again. Well, I was just thinking about maybe that free gift. I told you it's a trick. Now sound off. O'Reilly, you better be getting your men into position. Know what I mean? Oi, sir, me lads are ready for the wholesale slaughter. They were requesting, sir. Could we be in charge of torturing the prisoners? We won't be taking any prisoners this time, O'Reilly. None of them are gonna live through this. Hey, Cookie, better be getting some rations ready. Know what I mean? Yes, sir, I understand you. I know them boys get hungry after all that carnage. Mm-hmm. Especially that Luke. Did he see him, Luke? Uh-oh. I'm scared. I'm scared. I've never been in a real fight before. There's nothing to worry about, son. We got him outgunned. And besides, we got Luke. I know. And that's why I'm scared. Hey, men, raise the flag. Okay, man, pass out them new rifles, know what I mean? Hey, these are nice. Repeaters. Hey, O'Reilly, look at this. Yeah. Looks like you can get your fist down the barrel. Hey, weren't these outlawed at Geneva? I think I'm gonna go show mine to Luke. Well, all right, Captain. I want you to get your men up on the north wall. Yes, sir. Ready we, sir. All right, Simpson. You get your men ready. This ain't no god darn cakewalk. Yes, sir. Right away. All right, Chuck Troops. It's a rotten, bloody war, but it's the only one we've got. All right, have it, please. Now. One, two. Hail, Faith. Open gate. We teach you how to grow corn. We call it maize. Don't trust him, Captain. It's a trick. I know it's a god darn trick, Diggy. I know a few god darn tricks myself. I learned them at West Point. I gotta go check on Luke, see if them logging chains is holding him. You bit through the last ones. What's the matter, son? You homesick? No, sir. I'm real scared. I'm scared we're all gonna get scalped and killed and die in one big heap and, and not get no free gifts. Well, that ain't nothing to be ashamed of. We're all scared. You, sir? You're scared? Every time I go up against a beige foot. Beige foot? Well, not really beige, kind of an off-white. Kind of like, you know, an eggshell color. I'm afraid you're wrong there, Major. It's not quite an eggshell. It's not, it, it don't have that much yellow in it, you see. It's more, it's more like, uh, sort of like that, only not quite that bold. Like color of wheat. Now, what do you know, Savage? I suppose you've been to some sort of Native American art school. Besides, you'll be dead soon. No, it's more like a... You ever seen winter butter? You volunteers, you settle down in there. It was God darn one of you. Oh, sorry, sir. Uh, it's just being around all this ammo has got me and Luke and the boys a little overstimulated. As a matter of fact, if I had one of them beige foots in here right now, I'd, I'd probably cut his guts out with a rock. Yeah, I'll have to see you boys. 
something in his scrap. Yes, sir, and we consider Luke especially valuable to our unit. Yeah, that Luke, he, he's a character, ain't he? You know, sir, I've wiped out entire villages of Indian women and children, but Luke's done stuff that makes me heave. Make you heave? Well, I want you to know, uh, I think you're the human scum of the earth. And I mean that in the uh, nicest possible way. We aim to please. But what about the women and children? You mean the women or the children? I can't take it! I can't take it! Luke's escaped. Did he say I'm Luke loose? He chewed through the wall. The nightmare has begun. Uh-oh. We leave now, Pale Face. No free gift for you. But maybe you like us leave catalog, huh? We be him back. And we'll be waiting for you, Tan Man. Right, man? Yes, yes sir. sir. They're turning tail and running. We done it, sir. We hooked them. Well, what about the free gift? Forget the free gift. Let's hear it for Davy. You hip, hip, hooray! Corporal Davy Worrell. For bravery above and beyond the call of duty in the face of a hostile enemy, it is my honor to present you with this medal of valor. Gosh, thanks, Major. Know what I mean? Well, come on, Cookie. Hustle it up and get us some grub ready. Yes, sir. Been getting that grub ready right now. I know how slaughtering them beige will make men hungry. Beige, it wasn't beige. Not as hard. It was more like an army. So Davy finally retired from the army and Indian fighting and went on to become both Lewis and Clark, a great bunch of guys. Know what I mean? And this here is Ace Worrell, the famous fighter pilot. His most daring and dangerous mission took place right here in the good old years of the way. Know what I mean? Yes, so what's up? Yeah, nobody's saying. I heard the old man say they were bringing in some hot shot from Washington. I've heard that before. <laughs> situation is serious. I'm going to turn this briefing over to a man best qualified to handle an emergency like this. A, a man you may remember for his exploits at the Battle of Muscatel. A man who single-handedly turned the tide at the Battle of Escargot. A man I am proud to call my friend. A truly wonderful fighter pilot and a great human being. Lieutenant... Peace, war, war. Ten, that is. Men, we've got a problem. A serious problem. A problem only aviators the caliber of you men can solve. Men, a big monkey has crawled up on the Empire State Building and we've got to shoot him off of there. Sir, that's not scale, is it? What's the matter, soldier? You afraid of a little scrap? Afraid you might get your hands dirty? That's the trouble with you wimps. You ladies. One more crack like that, it's no more Mr. Nice Guy. Did you hear something? Boy, I sure did. A big monkey, a monkey, mind you, is sitting on top of the Empire State Building. Our Empire State Building. The one in New York City, New York. I've been there. And he's got a girl. Girl? You mean, you mean like a girl back home? I mean, he's got a girl, and it's just gone on too long. Her parents don't like it. He doesn't have a job. He has never been in the service. A visual aid. Men, our assignment is not just a simple mission over our nation's largest city, teeming with aliens 
taking our jobs, our money, talking funny. No. No. It's much more than that. The success or failure of this mission will determine the future of all homo sapi. That's me and you. So if any of you believe in evolution and believe that you are in some way related to this thug, I want you to step up here right now and ground yourself. I didn't think so. We'll come in low. Keeping the morning sun in his eyes. Dazzling the dumb ape with aerial acrobatics not seen since the sea of Chateau. We'll circle round and round the hairy ape. His hairy body with hot lead. But hey, what about the girl? The girl? Don't worry about the girl. Any one of us can whip the girl. Just swoop in as low as you can to that ape's belly, luring the greedy menace. With a banana bomber. And as he reaches his stubby, hairy, ape-like fingers skyward. Look out, Lefty. Lefty, look out. What's he done to you, Lefty? You. You ape! Where's my machine gun? Where's my little machine? Where's my little machine gun? Where's my machine gun? Bad monkey, bad monkey, bad monkey, bad monkey. Any questions? Yep. The worlds have had their share of national heroes and national symbols, but <laughs> if you got it, flown it. <laughs> Burn, that's my great uncle Lloyd. You know, every family's got its dark side, Burn, and the Worrells is no exception. My great uncle Lloyd was the meanest man in the whole world, possibly that ever lived, and proud of it. Go on, get out of my way, you mangy old flea harbor. Can't hunt. Can't fetch, can't guard, can't stay out of my way. Oh, Daddy, don't do that to old Spud. He hates it when you do that. It makes him twitch funny. That's it, boy. Take up with some old hound again your own flesh and blood. Poor starving old gut like me. Ain't got a pair of socks between me and Europe. Ruth, ah, oh, Ruth, is supper ready? Rock away again, a cliff for me. Let me hide myself in me. Ruth, what are we pretending?
mistake, huh? I was kind of hoping we'd pretend like we had lobster tonight. You know how fond I am of seafood. It's tender, though. Cuts with a fork. Where's that boy mistake? Ain't you called him to supper yet? There he is. Look at him. Six foot three, 265 pounds. He's only eight years old. What is it? What is it, Daddy? What is it? What is it? Look at him playing. That's his mistake. Bust up all your toys. Daddy will get you a new one. Yeah, Daddy is rich. Daddy's rich. <laughs> you know, I've tried to punish that boy. I've tried to whoop on him or beat him with a split rail. But no, I reckon I'm going to have to start working on him psychologically. You know, Ruth, you shouldn't have fixed up all these delicacies like this. We're smart enough as it is. Mistake! Ah, oh, mistake! Wait, Daddy! Don't start without me! All right, ready? Set? Go! Here's me if he's actually a gaining weight. Don't eat your steak like that, my steak. It'll choke you. Eat you some of this lobster you're so fond of. Oh, Daddy, we had lobster last night. Well, I guess you won't. Spaghetti. Yeah, Daddy, skinny, skinny. Here, get you some of that Parmesan cheese on that. I'm a working on them psychologically. Look at you, mistake, getting that spaghetti all over your face. Ain't you got any manners, boy? Go on, get out of here and get to bed. Oh, Daddy, how come I always got to go to bed? I don't want to go to bed. I ain't never going to go to bed. How come I always got to go to bed? He's a good boy, Lloyd. No. No, he ain't a good boy. He's dangerous. As if I ain't got enough stuff to trouble me, the Lord's got to give me that animal in there to live with. That's it, Lord. Just dump it right down here on old Lloyd. I can take it. I've got to get in there, Ruth, and make sure that boy's pretending to brush his teeth. Oh. He's a good boy, Lloyd. Mistake? Are you pretending like you're asleep yet? I'm gonna work on his mind. You want Daddy to read you a bedtime story? Yeah, Daddy, a story, a bedtime story. Daddy's gonna read to you here from the big book. Let me see. Yeah, here it is. This year's from Second Condominiums, six, seven, three, five, four, two, three, extension 12. One day there will be a boy named Mistake, born to Ruth and Lloyd Worrell, and he will catch monks and measles again.
and catch on fire and fall off the edge of the world and mash his fingers and die before he is twelve. Nighty night, mistake. Daddy? What? You won't rock me to sleep? All right. Here, Daddy. Use my rock. <laughs> I'm working on his mind. Vernon, when are you gonna give it up? You can't fix this old TV. Yo, let me have a crack at it. I got a real talent for electricity. And speaking of talent, this is my cousin, Billy Boogie Worrell, most talented man in our family, a real celebrity. As we speak, Vern, he is at the helm of a gigantic entertainment complex, know what I mean? Seeds in a blur of light and speed, leaving your earthly body behind, leaving you to skate with your mind. <laughs> boogie. Feel the boogie begin and rush from way down deep within. Come on, kids, Billy's hip, but remember, I am the captain of this ship. Just hang on tight and don't die of fright. Captain Billy's gonna take you out of sight. Oh, youngsters. Huh. <laughs> Wrap your little fingers around the bars. Then you better wish upon a star, because Captain Billy's gonna make you sicker than you are. Wanna ride? Something fast enough to strip your hide. But we both have terrible heart conditions. Never too young, never too old. There's no age limit to the bowl. But, but his heart, <laughs> but, but my condition would never... Don't worry, Mama. Billy's hip. But remember, I'm the captain of this ship. <laughs> Just hang on tight and don't die of fright. Captain Billy's gonna take you out of sight. Boogie. Hello, oh, right this way, sweet Madonna of the Midway. Let Billy make you boogie all alone. Oh, hold the phone. I'm a crazy dancer, a mad dog handler. Enjoy your ride, sir, on the scrambler. Boogie. Speaking, today we'll be flying at an altitude of tropospheric proportions. At a velocity of Mach cubed. So put on your high heel sneakers. Well, here, can you say well? Boogie. The boogie rush begin from way down deep within. <laughs> Billy Boogie's gonna take you there. You're gonna feel like you're floating on air. Hear your heart begin to pound to the deadly disco sound. Boogie. Let's do it some more. Come on, take a chance. Let's let it look and show you how to roll. Yeah, boogie. Hello. Yeah, nah, hon. Uh, sure, uh, I don't mind, uh, TV dinner. 
Push a thong this time? Yeah, yams are good. They're a better deal. I don't care what you found in this room. We'll kill it. Just a minute, would you? Okay. Okay, my mind. <laughs> slide to the left and slide to the right. Let your mind slide clean out of sight. Just relax and leave your body behind. Yeah. Oh, let's dance. Yeah. Billy Boogie World has taken you to the top. But sad but true, even good things must stop. Thank you for flying Scrambler Airways with Captain Billy. I always reach my destination with a great deal of stimulation. Okay. Do not leave your seats before the spinning beast has come to a halt. And please exit left as you come out of the octopus. And tell all your little gal friends, Billy Boogie is... There's your problem right there, Vern. See that little wire down there? It's got a short in it. This one, Vern. This one right here. <laughs> My daddy's got the other glove. Boy, Vern, this sure is a slow game. I'd rather be playing cards. And speaking of playing cards, my great-granddaddy, Rich Worrell, he was a card player. Won and lost vast sums on the Mississippi. Sometimes just at the turn of a card. See that and raise you further. <gasps> They've been going together for three years. Oh, I fold. I don't have a woman. Are we to believe, sir, that you are light in your loafers? Say, can I go home and get my sister? You know the rules table stakes. Oh, well. Maybe we could get my wife and put her in the pot and don't tell her. And what if you lost her? You tell her. <laughs> How rude! Ah, uh, that was nothing. Now that leaves you and me, Mr. Rich Whirl. What's it gonna be? I trust my credit is good here, sir. I'll see your woman and call you, sir. <laughs> Trip hooked. Hold it fast. I believe a full boat. Dust boat! Beats trip hooks. Your word would have been sufficient, sir. Reg, I'm glad you won me. <laughs> Just one more hand, world. Just you and me. This time we're gonna raise the stakes. <gasps> or are you just a <laughs> Freddy cat? Freddy cat? Well, sir, I consider that an insult. No world has ever been called a Freddy Cat, to my knowledge. 
Thank you, my dear. Fruit cake, fritter brain. Nope. No Wara has ever been called a Freddy kid. All right, Wara. I'll put up my saloon and all my dance hall girls just to win Verna back. <laughs> no gentleman would refuse. Have it your way, fat man. Rich, you can beat him. Stick with me, Verna, and you'll be wearing buffalo chips as big as diamonds. <laughs> Good luck, Rich. Sir? No, thank you, sir. I'm just fine the way I am. <gasps> He's got a straight. Maybe a straight flush. Maybe a royal flush. Could be nothing. Three. <gasps> He's got a pair. Working on a full house. Maybe he'll draw four of a kind. Could be nothing. <laughs> well, Rich, look like Vernon won't have to move things after all. For the saloon and all the dance hall girls, <laughs> beat a pair of queens and a pair of bullets. <laughs> <Bullet. laughs> <laughs> well, come on, show your cards. <laughs> Straight. Or a flush. Or a royal flush. <laughs> ah, it's nothing. Come on, Whirl. <laughs> <gasps> a straight. Full house. Full of a Come on, Whirl. You're bloody. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. A ten, a queen, a seven, a two, and a four, all different suits. <laughs> That's right. It's a terrible hand. Do you know what they say? Them's the grits. Well, you know, Verna, life is kind of like a card game. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. But you know, I could have sworn that a noble flush beat three of a... No. No, two pairs beats a full... No. Reg, you're so incredibly stupid. Fiddle to dee, Verna. Tomorrow is another day. You know, sir, I was always led to believe that if you had a little gentleman in a yellow hat and a little gentleman in a red hat, especially in conjunction with the rather plain lady with the cue beside her head, Mama? Didn't see that, did you? Crown me. And here's me and my granddaddy. I loved old Pop. He'd been everywhere and done everything, all at the same time. Hey, Pop! Wake up, Pop! Come on, Pop! Wake up! Well, look out, that redhead's got a gun. Look out. And down the little corner that's left around the one there. I'll tell you how to play the third base and you boy and over there. Look, it ain't coming! Pop, we ain't coming! Let's go fishing, Pop. No oh, way. it's a little early. Come to see you, Pop, baby. Let's go fishing, Pop. Well, help me up, yeah. Oh, yeah. There you go. 
Well, that's the guy, Dan. When them little paddle ball deals. Yes, sir. Let's go fishing, Pop. Let's go on the top of this. Go fishing, Pop. You know what's wrong with that, don't you? That string there is too long. Uh, maybe that paddle ain't big enough. See, if it was shorter, it wouldn't take so darn much time for that ball to get in there and out. And maybe that's it. I don't know. Go fishing, Pa. Great day for it. Ah, okay. no, let's go fishing. You want to? Yeah. Hey, huh? Get your pole. Yeah, sure, that string there is just too darn long. That's what it is. Come on, Pa. Come on. Yes, sir. Come on, Pop. Let's go fishing. Come on, Pop. There you go. Come on, Pop. You know, I love to play that baseball. And if it hadn't have been that I'd covered that with my helmet. No, Pop. They all hey, buddy, been Pop. Up. Come on, Pop. Oh, Pop. yeah. Was I in New Orleans? And Carol Lawrence was went in behind one of them flying tiger airplanes and changed their clothes. I seen a woman one time, boy, that done a that done a dance with a potato chip bag. Did I ever tell you about the time that me and Harriet was in a group called the Andrew Sisters? I was Laverne and she was Shirley. And at that time, Benny Goodman was getting his teeth worked on by a fella from Des Moines that was an insurance. That was during that big ball game. And I covered that baseball with my blanket and pulled George out of that ditch. I don't know, maybe like that. Listen now. Uh, Ernie, you want to get old Queequay in here, my old fishing buddy? Hey, that's his house, you know what I mean? Uh-huh. Oh, Queequay! 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 Come on out here, let's go fishing. Turn up that blue dress, eh? Come on, Queequay! Did I ever tell you about the time when me and Queequay was shipwrecked in Denver? It was my turn at bat. Then I lost both of my shoes. Uh, maybe I left them in the back of a 51 Hudson and a soup can. I don't know. That was some good times back then, wasn't it, Queequay? Mm. Yeah. That's when Harriet was in New Orleans, seeing a man who had patented a way to make chocolate chip cookies last forever, uh, using baked on enamel and high explosives. Then she took up with a guy who kept a bunch of those old World War I torpedoes in the front of a 36 Chrysler. Did you ever see a gypsy woman take her ring and turn it into a tablecloth? Of course, that was in 34. You don't remember 34. Ernie, you having fun? Yes, sir. Well, me too. This look like a good spot to you, Quick Way. Uh, how's the fishing gonna be, Quick Way? Get that little worm on that hook for me. 
You got it? Oh, you got a, you got a hook in there, huh? Well, here, let me get that for you. I ain't used that knife there since I got it in that muzzle. Oh, I got one, honey, look. I got a big one, too. Oh, yeah. Honey, look. I got, where is that going? Honey. See, I still got the scar. That's just the way it happened. You know, Vern, since me and you are such pals, such buddies, almost like brothers, I think you ought to be in my family album with the rest of my loved ones. Now, hold still, because I'm going to take your picture. OK, smile. It's one of these new 10-second jobs. You know, Vern, I didn't realize you had a kind of a, you know, it looks like Look at this. You. Duh. Edna! <laughs> well, anyway, that's when that blonde that, uh, that was a Nazi spy had run away from where they had her imprisoned and made a small fortune in Naga Hyde lingerie. We made her move to Toronto sent Harriet up there to feed her. That's back when Harriet crash landed that flying tiger airplane in the parking lot of the First National Bank of Billings, Montana, and caught a strange virus that she gave to Queequay, and he took to London and traded it for the 36 Chrysler. Then we seen Carol Lawrence. I was sitting on an I-beam and opened my lunchbox and inside was a piece of the great white buffalo. <laughs> <laughs>